what my experience and the things I'm observing is if somebody is willing to give the diet a try and really willing to do it and, and, and stick with it and maybe for, you know, longer than they like, but to really, really stick with it. I don't see, I don't see many, if any, you know, cases where this isn't really working for people. So I really appreciate that. You've mentioned something earlier. I was just talking to my client about this actually MCT oil. What is it about MCT oil that is so beneficial? This person just started using it in their coffee. They asked me if I use it and I say, you know what? I still really enjoy using it in my coffee in the mornings. And I notice a really mental kind of effect about 10 minutes after I start taking it. I feel like my brain is on and I feel just, just kind of good. It's not like jittery. It's not like a rush of energy. It's just kind of really level. What is MCT? What does that stand for? And what is that doing, excuse me, specifically in the brain? So, so MCTL is um, these medium chain triglycerides. They're um, they they've been used in epilepsy as a kind of way to induce ketosis exogenously without um, doing ketogenic, what sometimes alongside ketogenic diet, sometimes on their own, and they basically convert into ketones such as beta hydroxybutyrate in the body, and they they basically put the body into a state of ketosis as a supplemented form, and this can be really useful for periods where people sometimes children with epilepsy want to eat more carbs in their diet, but they also want to stay in ketosis. And there's good evidence that the MCT all supplemented diet is as good for seizure reduction in many cases than than the full ketogenic diet. So it's a really useful tool for people um, if they want to maintain ketosis while having more flexibility with their diet, or if they have um, you know they fall out of ketosis for some reason and I, I definitely experienced the same thing as you described it really um boosts the brain and there's a kind of story about that that you could tell that we're, we're kind of only ex exploring at the moment um uh, to discover whether this is the case but i think we really changed our diet so substantially the agriculture revolution introduced massive introduction of wheat and then we brought into that also sugar and uh, ultra processed foods and disruption to circadian rhythms and, and all these things that affect our metabolism so badly and, and we've understood a huge amount about this in the peripheral tissues of the body, like about diabetes and atherosclerosis and all non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, all these kind of physical issues. But we've never really considered what this does to the brain and the central nervous system. Um, and, and this is kind of, it seems like you say crazy that this wasn't considered uh, more, but, but clearly this metabolic dysfunction must have some impact on the brain and the central nervous system. And maybe this is what's driving some of this increase in the rates of mental health uh, problems worldwide. There's a significant. There was a report in the Guardian this week um, saying that the of all health conditions, neurological conditions are the fastest rising in the global burden of disease. And so there's something driving a massive increase in neurological uh, illness and psychiatric illness. And it doesn't seem like our genes just suddenly you know shifted into some new mode. It, there's something in our environment that is it seems to be pushing this kind of increase in mental health. And so I think a, a really interesting thing to look at is, you know, when someone takes an MCT all and experiences this, their brain lighting up and then feeling good again, maybe they've been deprived of this evolutionary fuel source that they should be receiving all the time. And this is this is just them getting reintroduced to it in the same way that if you took sunlight away from someone for a long time and they suddenly saw the sun, they would feel so much better and they would become so much healthier. And maybe I think MCT all is a bit like this. It's giving people exposure to ketones again, sometimes for the first time in a very long time. And I, a great example of that was, um, there was this trend, I, I don't know, um, I'm sure it's still uh, happening, but the people would put MCT oil in their coffee, um, like, a, you know, like a bulletproof coffee was when it was, what it was called when I first found it. And so many people write about how that's helped them with their thinking and cognition. And it's just a little window into ketosis for people for the first time. So it's a really, so yeah, MCT oils can be a really good way to introduce someone to ketosis and show them, uh, the effects of what it can be like, but there's no substitute for a full uh, healthy ketogenic diet. But uh, for me, they've been a very useful tool. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate that. I think back on the story of Dr. Mary Newport um, that she's told us on our show where her husband, they weren't into changing their diet at that time. They were just starting to learn about things. And so she was sneaking coconut oil into his oatmeal, I believe. And so, yes. yeah, it wasn't as good as changing the entire diet, but at least you were providing coconut oil, which a component yeah. of coconut oil is MCT. And, you know, we see the pictures of the clock test that her husband drew over the yeah. course of, I want to say it was like 35 days where the first drawing, I, I mean, a two-year-old could do a better job drawing a clock yeah. than that. So to win 35 days, you definitely recognize that it's a clock. And that just came from just adding that in. And that to me is a really interesting um, kind of demonstration of how ketones are used in the body. They really are kind of supply driven. If you have more of them, you'll use more of them and have better energy. That's a little bit different than glucose in the body. 
Definitely. It's, um, I, I met Mary recently at the Metabolic Health Summit this year, and it was really cool to meet her because, she, uh, you know, Alzheimer's is a very advanced stage of um, cognitive decline. And, and you know, the mental health conditions um, like bipolar were originally called uh, dementia precox, like the kind of precursor to dementias, because it's the kind of decline of brain function that can happen over a very long time. And so many people with mental health conditions, unfortunately, you know, uh, can develop these things later on in life. And I'm very hopeful for ketogenic therapy and metabolic therapies that they prevent this kind of uh, dynamic and, and kind of give people the opportunity to heal their brain and recover like we see in epilepsy with children. So I think that the, um, yeah, the kind of uh, restoration of brain energy, you can see it in Alzheimer's in, in these ketone studies and in brain imaging and in patients. Uh, people like uh, Stephen Kinane have demonstrated with MCTLs and uh, mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's that it restores brain metabolism. And I think that this is kind of also what people experience at a kind of earlier stage when they have some of these mental health conditions is, is it's less of your dysfunction, but you still have an opportunity at that age to kind of repair it and use ketosis as a way to let the brain repair itself. Um, one of the hopeful things for me is in epilepsy, when you do this with uh, children, they have, uh, if they do it strictly for two years, about, you know, a significant proportion of them will go into complete remission for the rest of their life of epilepsy. I mean, isn't that incredible, the idea that someone could be having like 50, 100 seizures a day, and they are able to live the rest of their life with no seizures if they stick to this for a year or two years. And I think at that age, the brain, if you give it the right environment, can can do a lot of uh, healing. And uh, I'm hopeful that in mental health conditions, we'll find something similar, that if you introduce this to young people where they can do a year or two strict years of uh, metabolic repair in the brain by doing something like ketosis, they can never have to worry about mental illness again. For, for me, I, I only found this when I was kind of in my late 20s. And I think that the... Um, I think that this, you know, and so I have to do it all the time to experience the benefits of ketosis. I, just like someone with epilepsy, I have to stay in it uh, all the time. But I, I do hope we can introduce these ideas, um, you know, if we go through RCTs and this is a, a good treatment approach for young people, there's a lot of hope that this could help people avoid some of the complications of mental illness throughout their life.